very excited to have this panel today, and Alex is going to read their bios and tell you a little bit more of what we're going to do. And please, the drawings, we're here to raise some money to make the book, so um, at the end, if you have any questions, we're all here and you can ask us about them. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here on this rainy day. <laughs> it's my pleasure to read the bios to you. Uh, Juliana Cerqueira Leite is primarily a sculptor, originally from Sao Paulo, Brazil, but has lived and worked in New York for 12 years. Maria Lagos is from Rio de Janeiro. She is an editor, art director, and founder of Familia Editions, which aims to interpret, create, and publish the work of contemporary Brazilian artists. And last but not least, Lou Solano is an independent curator and art consultant and co-founder of Art in Brackets. Thank, Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thank you for having us here, yeah. Laura Thank and you. Alex. Thank you. Um, so I think we can start today talking a little bit about the process of the book. Uh, we have all these images around us that relate to the body, and I would like to position a little bit some of um, Juliana's pro prior projects. Uh, we have the uh, Potential Space book that you can see later. That's a previous artist book Juliana did, uh, also talking about in, uh, the interior of the body and uh, her w sculptural work on the wall right there, uh, which is the, the part of the series Reaching. Uh, and I would like you to tell us your pro process when creating the drawings we are seeing about the book and, and the motivator for you to, to draw them in 2D, because bear in mind Juliana's main um, uh, material and support is sculpture. So how the drawing uh, happened for you? Um, yeah, so I have a drawing practice. These are some drawings that I've made as well that are kind of more in line with what I normally show. Working so, I guess, figuratively or rep more representationally isn't normally something I'm interested in. Um, but for this book specifically, it was what appealed to me, like in terms of actually taking um, us, you know, people looking at the book, into the body as a visual journey and almost like having a dialogue with the representations of the inner body. So how, they're, how they exist in anatomy, which is generally how you see them. So, you know, our relationship to the parts of the body that we don't have visual access to, like I can look at my skin, um, but this whole interior land is kind of obscured from sight, um, other than through this almost secondary sources, which are images in anatomy books, or sometimes images from medical uh, exams that I might do if I injure myself. Um, there's always a slight remove uh, from actually what the inner body is to me, and how I'm experiencing it visually in terms of representation. So for me, it was very interesting to consider like how can I represent my own inner body, but not uh, create a schism between the experience of being it and the experience of, of how it's represented. So while not denying anatomy, like I don't want to like you know go against my understanding of anatomy, which is pretty basic. Um, I wanted to kind of allow, create a space for something that was a little bit more inclusive of the experience of like being, in, inhabiting a body, being a body, right? And that tricky territory where it's like kind of like you're inhabiting it, but you're also it. The notion of possession becomes complicated because you can say it's my body, but actually you are your body. Um, and like all of these ideas, try and explore them with these drawings. And, and working with drawing, working with the format of a book, um, like lent itself naturally, I think, to that investigation. Can I yeah. go backwards into this process and how you got to decide to represent your own feelings? When you first got to me talking about making an art book together, yeah. you wanted 
wanted to include interviews with other people's experiences with their own bodies. Yeah. So I think it's interesting to uh, mention how the starting point of actually uh, using text and research in other people's experiences and getting to the point that what was more interesting in this representation for this specific art book, because an art book is a work of art itself in a editorial or uh, publication format, right? Um, how after thinking and rethinking who would be these people you would interview to get to this final uh, conclusions in terms of different sensations and different experiences in other people's bodies, at the end you decided to work on yourself yeah. and in your interior body and how all these questions you wanted to uh, pose to other people uh, turn to be your questions to yourself. Yeah. And that's how also you, we started thinking of even including these interviews in the, the, the book originally, but then you realize that it was deeper and more interesting in terms of experience and, and uh, researching yourself and how this would become a book format with your own feelings, yeah. with your own sensations. Yeah so, yeah, so basically the very early stages of this book was a project I did in 2011 or 12 when I first moved to New York at a gallery um, that was owned by Jack Childs, who we actually bumped into yesterday. Um, and it was essentially a survey. So I handed out all of the survey material to people who came to the opening and they could submit their answers via email. And the questions were things like, are you in your body? Um, are you bigger or smaller than your body? Where does your body end and where does it begin? And it was, um, it was sort of a, a des I had a desire to understand like what it is that these questions mean to people and also how language kind of fails almost comically at describing the experience of embodiment. Because, you know, are you in your body or not? Like this, you know, it kind of taps into like notions of what you imagine as your, your own cosmology, your spiritual beliefs, you know? Yeah. Or, and then also like how, in a way, the, the very positing of the question already separates you from your body. Because if I ask you, are you in your body? Mm. It already suggests that that's not you, right? So like language is structured according to certain parameters that already generate a, propriet a proprietarian kind of uh, uh, relationship to your body, right? Um, so that schism was where I was trying to explore. And so when I, reached out to Maria, I was like, I have this project and it's kind of unresolved and I kind of want to, I think it would be a good book. I want to interview people and like create these texts. And I was making these drawings, which have to do with repetitive movement. And I was seeing that these drawings could be somehow expanded into this territory of like negotiating how embodiment can be or cannot be described via, via language. So at first it was going to be a book with a lot of text, and then it started to get really heavy. I reached out to the first person who's like Professor Emeritus of Philosophy at the University of Oregon, whose name is Mark Johnson, and he wrote a book called Metaphors We Live By. He works with George Lakoff, who's like a well-known uh, cognitive neuro-linguist, I guess, <laughs> maybe, uh, very niche. But like he kind of looks at how metaphors like, that are used in language structure and are structured by embodied physical experience. So if I say things like, oh, you're really moving up in life, you know, like I, the part of your brain that activates the moving up metaphor mm -hmm. isn't actually separate from the part of your brain that activates when you're like gonna climb four sets of stairs. Like you, it's, there isn't a separate brain part that negotiates metaphors and abstraction from the brain part that negotiates your actual physical experience. Like if I say, um, you know, uh, we gotta go and hang out with Maria because she's really down, we gotta pick her up. Like the part of my brain is the same one that like activates when I pick up this book. Like there isn't a separate place. So it, and that kind of I think does a lot of really interesting things, especially if you're a visual artist, thinking through metaphors or allegories, like it kind of act, re returns them to the body, right? In an interesting way. Um, so I reached out to him and interviewed him, and just from that first interview, I was like, if this is going to be a book, this is actually going to be a PhD. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so that, yeah, like, that was our discussion. Maybe, like, what is it that this book can be? 
And just like with the book, A Potential Space, where I also went out and interviewed a whole bunch of people about vaginas and like, you know, like, like I did all this work, like I kind of then backtracked and was like, this is not a PhD and just like ran back into an artist book. So that's what and, happened with this. And well. also you found a lot of resistance. Yes. from people you wanted to interview yes. and were not interested in sharing. Yeah, because it's really feelings. personal. Like yeah. if you're reaching out to people you don't know, like I wanted, I was like, maybe it would be really cool to get an athlete. You know, it would be really cool to get like people who are at the extremes of physical experience and like get them to answer these questions. But a lot of people who are, you know, athletes and, and uh, you know, they don't, like I don't know a lot of these people that I was reaching out to. And they were kind of just Im immediately like, yeah, not really what I want to talk about. Because it's too personal. Yeah, too intimate. <laughs> yeah. It is. Both the vagina and the rest of yeah. the body, right? <laughs> yeah. Although the vagina was amazing because like, I found a woman who, you know, she's trans and she got a vagina and she made a whole musical about it. So like instantly I was like, I can talk to you about vaginas all day. <laughs> <laughs> but the idea here, when you started doing the, um, the drawings, how was the process that you tap into um, the mood of drawing a certain area. Because we had these discussions in the studio and I think it's very interesting to share here how, what happens before you start and during the drawing. Yeah, the, so essentially I found it really hard to um, like basically just go into drawing these parts of the body that are not really visible straight away because like how do you navigate them right so like you navigate them with attention I think in some ways and with sensations but these sensations are very subtle and they're normally sensations that we're used to not paying attention to right so for your normal day-to-day -day functioning you can't be like constantly alert to what's happening in your digestion or like with your respiratory system you need to just kind of be out more outward facing so turning more inward facing was I found a process that required like a lot of slowing down and also I found it easier to write while I was doing it so I started kind of almost like a journal of like what it was that I was feeling when I was going through my body and of course this would change you know like um, you know if I if I was sort of you know drinking water my throat would feel differently than if I was speaking or eating and and I would sort of journal these feelings and then from these texts I started to be able to make the drawings so they kind of started to act as like markers or placeholders for what I wanted to be showing in the drawings as opposed to um, starting off with sketches like if I found it extremely difficult to just go straight into sketching with this territory because it just yeah it's like a little too subtle almost I needed to engage it in a different way first and so there was there's text that's going to go in the book it's just it's just a tiny little summary of these experiments um, that goes in the middle of the book actually in like a very thin paper um, and that's the only text. It's a facsimile of the yeah, handwritten, like handwritten journal. Yeah, so yeah. let's talk a, a little bit about the format of the book because I think it al aligns with all these ideas that you're, you're both looking uh, to present in an editorial format so maybe Maria you can start describing how how all these images will be in, in the publication? Well, I think uh, the challenge here when we decided not to include the survey and go directly to a visual book was to um, translate the experiment of the sculptural work of Juliana, because uh, of course uh, she's, she's mostly known for, for her sculptural work and also since she's always um, as she's saying already, very involved with her own body and her body is directly involved in her work. Um, I was thinking how to translate that into a, a book object that would still be a printed paper object, but how to make a sculptural book, but that not, not uh, transforming that in a too complicated um, format. So um, we decided to work with different sizes of paper that um, are um, explicitly chosen for this in and out sensation, like zoom in, zoom out into certain um, parts of the body. That's why, like maybe the smaller ones 
or more detailed in terms of getting deeper and closer to some parts and some sensations and the bigger ones or more at wider perspective of each um, part of the body. And we decided to mix up these three at the end because at the beginning yeah. we thought of four sizes but then the small was too small for the detailed drawings. So we're mixing up three different um, page sizes so they can kind of like move inside as well because they're not going to be bound. They will be just uh, hold by um, an, elastic. an elastic, a cylindric elastic. Mm -hmm. So that permits also that the pages can be in and out and you can move the pages around. And um, that was the way we uh, so found the solution to make the object uh, sculptural and also um, movable in, 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 in relation to the body itself and the sensations, they're not fixed, right? They're always changing, they're always moving. So we wanted to make the book uh, simple, but at the same time that the object itself could um, represent the, these movements. And mm -hmm. that's how we also chose this. Uh, well, the format was based also in some decisions we have to make. In addition, there are like the paper that fits into a bigger paper. and. We don't waste too much paper, so, mm -hmm. so like, the specific sizes are related to these uh, editorial and design decisions, but um, the smaller side was still comfortable size for, for Juliana to draw and at the same time get deeper and closer and just zoom in into certain parts of the body. And I think one of the interesting things, uh, getting to the details of the drawings, Juliana, is also that you got to a much more complex and detailed uh, trace and even the color palette it's uh, I mean much broader than you were using before in the previous series of drawings and I think that's also interesting as a translation of your experiment of getting more complex and more detailed yeah I mean I was very surprised at the beginning when you started showing me the sketches because I I was expecting something more in that line yeah and, and of, of course, uh, those drawings represent uh, the repetition of some movements, Yeah, correct? those are basically movement notations, yeah. And then, we, we, of course, once you get inside, it's not the movement to the outside, so it's, it's really the, these feelings. So I, I was surprised, I mean, greatly surprised, because I think these drawings are spectacular. Yeah. I'm, I don't have a favorite, because I love them all. <laughs> but it, it, it was very surprising to me, too, in terms of uh, curating and editing the project with you. But going back to the format, um, also we had an idea of making a special edition, which we do sometimes, not with all the publications, but in this case we thought it was an interesting experience for you to try maybe different kinds of techniques of printing, so how we would um, get the sculptural object back to the book, uh, not only with these moving pages, but also with a special cover. We didn't know if we would make an object that would go separate, or make something that would go together with the book that you can separate. Yeah, which is this. So that's we first tried the the um, the etching printing in a in a print shop in Madrid. Juliana came to Madrid. I, I'm based in Madrid. I'm Brazilian, based in Madrid. Started the project here in New York. That's how we met. But she, she was in Milan in the residency doing a bronze um, ex sculpture. Right? Yeah. So she came to Madrid for a couple of days so we can I mean, touch base in the project. And I took her to a print shop to try <coughs> whatever could work in that moment. Right? Like, let's make some tests. That's also one of the nice things of making books like this because we can offer the artist different formats and different. Uh, experiments in terms of materials and printmaking. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you want to talk yeah, about it, was, like the process of making? Yeah. So the basically, I can we, we can maybe pass this around. Like this was um, essentially like we we're talking about having this cover, a special edition, and a lot of my work has to do with negative spaces, which is pretty obvious with the book, the other book. The and um, I was working at a foundry, and so I thought, why don't I make a clay plate? and just kind of like massage it and almost as if I was massaging someone's skin or someone's back and like of course the notion of the book having a spine was part of the idea and like uh, yeah. so I was like she's gonna like move my fingers around this back and then I cast this clay very thin clay sheet with plaster and then you know it was kind of like pouring water back and forth into a cup so it was like I made a negative and then I made a positive 
with this epoxy resin, which is a material I don't normally use, but for the pressure of a press, you've got to use something really strong, and that was it. <laughs> so we made a, a epoxy plate that was basically like the gesticulation on the clay, and then cast that, or it, like basically used it to um, deboss or emboss. I was well, confused. actually, the first one didn't work. The first Broke, one shattered, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the one we printed in Madrid was not the, the proper material. No, it's because I had to go to, a, yeah, it was a long story, but I had to go to a conservation store in, in Milan and try to explain that I needed epoxy, and it was just, it didn't go well. So I ended up with something that wasn't what I thought it was. <laughs> but it's also, that's also the fun part of making this kind of projects, because you don't have the pressure of timing, yeah. like you don't have a real deadline, and you can experiment different uh, processes of, Techniques, yeah. and printmaking, and this, and it takes you a little bit out from what is your usual creative process, right? Yeah, so no, it was very cool to see the paper become very clay-like, you know, mm -hmm. like, and pick up so much detail too. Like in some parts, you can actually see my fingerprint, and it's very aligned with the idea of being experimental because. Uh, in the beginning when you were talking about anatomical uh, sketches and how we know our body from these images and, and uh, hospital exams and so on, um, first of all, not in the hospital, hopefully, but, but the anatomical exams are done um, with the dead body, right? Yeah, exactly. And your, your interest here is on the experiment of of being your body yeah. or being in the body or being in relation to the body and and I think uh, the process itself showed as experimental as um, the rest and here uh, correct me if I'm wrong but I think when Maria was mentioning about the colors and how the drawings um, happened there there's a lot of transitions right mm -hmm. How did you feel that evolution from the first drawings and, and how it has been changing during the, pro the project? Yeah. They, like the first initial sketches are very, very loose. And I think like you're bringing up a really important point, which is that the, like one of the reasons why I wanted to focus on trying to do almost like an alternative anatomy book is partly because like so much of anatomy is based on the male body and so much of anatomy is based on the mentality of dissection right so like you know if the body is literally a lot of these early drawings which ha still are used I mean it's kind of amazing like the, the the language and visual organization of the anatomical systems is you know basically something that emerges a very long time ago in a very different world that was very white, very male dominated, and it's, it, it's a kind of thought in accordance with these early humanist ideals of like a natural God divine uh, system of logic, right? So it's just like what was projected as God, which was a very Christian God, was the sort of then projected into the body, and the body was organized almost to like reveal a divine plan. So biological essentialism is literally built into how anatomy is represented. Um, and it's a huge problem as a woman <laughs> to, to deal with biological essentialism. And like the, and also, you know, that tr it, it spirals out into all sorts of different structures that are used to oppress human beings, you know, from ableism to uh, racism to sexism. So it's, I think, in some ways trying to sort of like shift, but also make something that's very personal, like as in it's my body and I'm drawing it yeah. and you can look at it like kind of to preserve an autonomy of yeah. other people's relationships to their own body while also kind of questioning how and why things need to be represented in specific ways and why it's so dominant that things are represented based on this one, you know, because we take it for like, re this is real, or this is, yes. this is how it is, but yeah. it's actually also mediated by a cultural perception, you know? But, uh, but if you don't keep your own subjective and you just offer a new way like that fits everyone, it's more of the same, right? Yeah. It's the repetition of the same gesture just by your own vision. Yeah. So I really... Um, it took my attention when you were describing that you thought about doing this survey and representing so many people, yeah. but at the end, to be experimental and offer uh, 
what you are living in your body it has to be your body and mm. not you yeah. you don't necessarily yeah. have have to represent all of us like again creating another universal exactly. yeah yeah exactly so yeah i think in some ways it's like hopefully an invitation for people to yeah pay more like pay attention spend, to their own yes as and to spend time for example juliana was describing in a studio visit how she was i don't know using her tongue to explore her teeth and mm -hmm. the mouth and you know and I, and she's describing to me and I'm like mm. <laughs> and trying to look at her drawing and see if I feel like you know she feels maybe bad. I don't feel like that when I do my own exploration yeah, yeah. and and it's really I felt like an invitation to go like oh okay is that how you see this part of the body mm -hmm. I, kind of don't have visuals yet, mm -hmm. but I may um, try to be aware and create uh, some visuals based on previous visuals and your visuals now and, and so on. So yeah. it, it's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. too. It's a whole trip. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think maybe it's important <laughs> to explain that the book starts off with the mouth. So like the first drawing that you see when you open it, and all of these drawings are folded in half, right? Yeah, and they're I think that's, that's important to say. When you hold the cover, which is the special edition, these drawings go in and folded. Yeah. So you don't see the entire drawing necessarily. You can see half of it, but you can disassemble and you can uh, pull it from the side, right? Yeah. Well, the idea is to see only half of the first half and then the <laughs> other half because you go from the mouth to the anus and back. So yeah. it's really so a the very middle. It's a way in. Outside in and then back. So that's why we only show the first half you just fold it and one inside the other and you go really from outside to inside and back yeah so yeah so the mouth is like the yeah. half of the drawing so, so she doesn't give away the entire scenario you gotta earn it somehow yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what started striking me when i was making them was like how many um of the drawings like kind of like have holes so like it's kind of like you're sort of like going 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 yeah. or they're like passages or there's like because it's like, as you, you know, you think like the throat, the digestive system, like you, there is this natural sort of like going through a negative space and then you come out the anus, of course, and it's just like, there's, there's something interesting about these sort of non-linear paths too. So it's like, okay, start with the mouth and then you go in the throat, but then wait, you also go in the nose. So I was like, okay, so draw the sinuses and then the eyes, which the drawing's actually not here, but have the and then the ear and then some of these things don't have passages through them but others do so like inside of the drawing of the ear folded you have those two smaller drawings which are the back and the front of the same sheet of paper which are sort of listening from a kind of more cognitive sense of like making sense of sound for me and then the bottom one is more sound as like texture <laughs> so kind of like this weird ASMR trip where you're sort of like hearing crunchy things and it feels like you're somehow touching the sound um, vibration so, the vibration yeah so you can have three drawings to a certain area because that exploration called for that in one single drawing if you're ha you're happy with the result for that yeah. other area yeah it could, it could keep going you know like it could be a huge book yeah. <laughs> <laughs> phd yeah i, I hear <laughs> post postdoc <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah maria in how about um when you when you think of uh this book as a sculpture and and put it together this the, the element so we described the cover uh the pages but then we have this inner uh group of of uh, text yes small pages with text how does that play in the in the book that's bound because you have to read it in sequence okay mm -hmm. and it, it's actually something we added afterwards when she started sharing those notes with me and i realized it was uh, when we decided not to include any text until she started doing, uh, taking these notes in a, in a deeper and more complementary way to the drawings, it was not just, it was really important to add these notes to the book because um, not everybody understands what she's saying here now, right? And you didn't understand when she was trying to explain her feelings. And Absolutely. I think these drawings are 
fascinating but not not so obvious for some readers or people who are interested in, in getting deeper into her work and also these feelings. So we decided together that it would be interesting to include these notes. So she is writing the notes in the real size that it's going to be in the book. So it, it will be a real facsimile. She, actually, that was the whole... Handwritten. The handwritten, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it felt like a little monk, like sitting there, like transcribing <laughs> from the sketchbook. Like, <laughs> well, because it was already a decision to make the whole book the original scale, yeah. right? So it would be weird just to make that one, like, uh, uh, um, like a uh, transcribe. No, uh, when you pass it to digital, yeah, to digitize it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Digitalize. it would be weird to have such a. Uh, sensorial and physical object and then have like a text that's not uh, related to this movement so yeah. it's also part of her movement of her gesture to handwrite and also the handwriting of Juliana is easy to read because if it was impossible <laughs> it would be complicated it's then you would have to think about another yeah. solution and right? we are doing a translation because she's writing in English okay Familia is a um, Brazilian only artist books publisher for, for who doesn't know, but Juliana has been living here for a long time and since she's working here, she's thinking in English. So her original text in this case is in English, which is fine because I, I always respect the artist process and I think that's not the kind of thing we should edit uh, during the process. So we're translating the English text to Portuguese and we will have a, like a little added a uh, little folder mm -hmm. inside, like small sheet with the translation, because we still need to reach our Brazilian public, and also because we are Brazilian, so it yeah. was important to, to have the translation. Important to have it. So, so, the, the so each, each book will have both languages? Yeah, you have just a little yeah. um, diptych with the translation uh, to Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And how many books uh, you will be printing? Uh, By true. the time we sell all the drawings yeah. here and <laughs> and celebrate that, <laughs> we can start to plan on that. That's that's uh, well, yeah. We need a we need the support to make the book happen mostly because printing now it's even more expensive than before. The paper became like a, a like jewelry nowadays. <laughs> the papers are much more expensive than before, and we want to make this great quality printing and great quality paper. So it's more complicated to make it happen, but we're doing this now, and um, 250 copies of which 25 are the special edition with a cover and a box that protects the cover that we're making the, the similar papers. And yeah. Normally, we when we make special editions, it's 10%, uh, but the, pre no, the first ones we didn't do, we, do, we did bigger when they were etchings with Rosanna Paulino and and Dalton, but we thought 25 special editions and 250 books. And the colors of the papers for the special editions will vary, right? Yeah, yeah we're still figuring it out. Um, but there's like, the, we're working with this kind of paper, which is handmade in Canada, and it comes in a very, you know, limited palette. So we're kind of picking ones. I like the ones that look more like stone-like or clay-like. Mm -hmm. So we're going to kind of try and stick with those. And also we thought it would, was interesting to work with very neutral, clean colors for the cover and then you get into the explosion of color inside. Yeah. So the box is also like a, a darker, same tone, but a darker color for the paper that covers the box. Mm -hmm. So you, you really have the surprise when you get to the interior, the title of the book, interior. So you yeah. just have this mystery yeah. on the cover and you really get deep into the colors when you start the, the trip into the inside uh, body. And it also works in Portuguese interior and interior. Uh, it's like the same writes, word. It's the Portuguese same word. So all the met metaphor, hopefully, you will activate the same area of the book. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm also interested in sharing uh, your ideas on how the how the book, uh, I, I know that the gender part of, of your research was, was interesting for you. And how do you see this in this, in this project? Yeah, so because it's my body, 
it's a body that is anatomically female um, to the standard that my body is anatomically female. So, you know, and healthy, and healthy, yeah, yeah. I think that's so. The, that's interesting. To yeah. to a certain extent, healthy. So, like to the you know, for example, like for me, it was interesting to consider things like perspective. So, you know, which from which angle do I see myself experiencing certain places or certain parts of my body like you know d it's not necessarily how you would see it in an x-ray or an illustration like I'm not outside of my body looking at it like I'm kind of like I have a certain imaginary relationship to like how I might feel it or see it and so like for example like the breasts or that this part of the torso like you know like this is often very sore and painful for me partly probably because I'm a sculptor and I'm doing a lot of drawings <laughs> but like the you know like how the breast feels very like Un, unhomogeneous, like heterogeneous in texture when you like move it around. So I was trying to like use certain experiences of like what it actually feels like to have certain body parts. And then, you know, as we're kind of like moving into like the reproductive system, um, you know, like deciding like how do I break it out into parts? And I'm like, okay, the clitoris definitely needs its own page. Um, you know, like and then the, the uterus and like how that relates to like different experiences of like pain or shame or menstruation, you know, like all of these different things and how to bring those, that conversation into these drawings. Um, you know, I haven't had children, for example, I'm sure it would be completely different for someone who had. Like the, the you know, separations of these systems and how they get shown in the book, I think comes much more from like where the priorities that I experience in my own body and how I, you know, what I, how I relate to these parts of my body. So, yeah. I have a question. Is that what you meant? Or yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. <laughs> Within the same subject, how did you choose which ones would be uh, large, medium, and small? I mean, I kind of like some of the smaller ones are where feelings get a little like really abstract. Um, so like taste, which is like behind Lisanya, whose amazing show is in the front of the gallery, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, is you know, like a little bit smaller than the mouth because it's kind of an attribute. I don't know, it just seemed, I just kind of went with what naturally seemed to make sense to me. Um, and then the, the other next to taste is like the sense of smell and how I kind of imagine that happening. Um, and so these, and then, you know, with a sense of like hearing the also like kind of going smaller. So it kind of played with that a little bit. Um, I tried to sort of keep things that felt, I don't know, they, it's just, it's super intuitive. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's just like certain things felt very like establishing sort of notions, like, you know, the mouth, the throat, like they kind of felt like very like specific places to me. And then within those places, I can kind of go into different feelings, you know, like I can kind of like go into smell, I can go into different aspects of hearing or you know so I kind of like played around with that in terms of scale so we are now um, separating um, this well not now because they have to be photographed so if you intend to buy one of the <coughs> uh, drawings today bear in mind they will have to stay because they will be photographed all together in the same light to be able to have a uh, uniform um, book um, so the, eventually they will be separated, but there is a body of final sketches that you you want to to keep together. Yeah. Uh, how um, I I think it's very interesting to tell people how many not how many in numbers but how sketches bec became final drawings and what is a final sketch. Okay. So like the. Basically, the initial sketches, there's many, many, many of them. And they were sort of trying to resolve a lot of the experiences that I had in terms of this process of like paying attention and feeling and writing down the experience of like experience, like moving through these inner parts of the body, of my body, of me. <laughs> it's problematic. Um, and, and then the, so the initial sketches were very loose, very kind of trying to be like, okay, like, I mean, for example, like one of the first things that you notice is that inside and outside don't particularly make sense mm -hmm. when you're talking about your own body because like I can lick and feel the outside of my lips and I can lick and feel the inside. And, like I don't stop feeling the inside when I'm licking the outside. It's just a matter of attention, right? Mm -hmm. Or like, 
the, for example, um, you know, when you touch yourself, like, which one are you, you know, like, are you your finger or are you yourself? And like, you know, so those experiences and how they kind of become very, very, very built into being a being that's able to move limbs around detachedly and touch themselves. Like there's, you know, like Lucy Rigari has this like beautiful notion of describing the female as uh, an essential part of being female as like this constant self touching. Um, the, the, you know, this notion was something I wanted to build into the drawing. So like the, you know, that the transparencies or certain things like that were trying to, me trying to resolve some of these aspects um, as best as I could. As, and so there, the, a lot of like the original sketches were trying to resolve, like how am I gonna talk about, or how am I gonna show this? And then with the final sketch, they look exactly like these almost. Like they're, they're final to the point of like being exactly the correct scale. And then the only thing that I'm still resolving is like which colors am I gonna go with? And sometimes in the middle of the sketch, I'll like change my mind. So with the final sketches, there's like some shifting around of decisions in terms of colors, um, but not really so much in terms of form, because like the forms have already been determined by all the sketching that came before that. And, the, and also came from the idea of the book itself, right? Because yeah. it's also, also like limited your thought and on how this was going to work as a whole body yeah. of work together, bound the bound way with thought. And, yeah, so, and so the symmetry in the drawings, yeah. for example, or lack of is like thought about in terms of like how you're going to experience it. The but positioning. You, did, you, <coughs> did you have also, you, you mentioned a change of colors, but did it happen that you needed or wanted to change scale? Like a small sketch became a bigger one in the final version? It happened, yeah, that happened a little earlier, like through the sketching, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of like post-its on the wall in terms of like, And there's still yeah. lots of drawings to come. Still lots of drawings, yeah, so there's 22 drawings. I've got seven more to finish, Yeah. so we're still working. So the body is still working. Still sketching. Mm -hmm. So the book will have 44 pages uh, of a movable sculpture. 44 of drawings, then we have the little sketchbook inside. Too. Oh, that's, that's right. Like so that doesn't like count. That's an add-on. That's the written part. Yeah. Uh, besides the 44 and with the elastic I'm trying to give you visuals of what's coming uh, with the drawings folded and ready for you to to go into this uh, trajectory uh, I would like to thank Maria and Juliana for this amazing thank description you, of the questions. book and Alex <laughs> and Laura for having us and open for questions <coughs> Questions? <laughs> I'm curious about Too something. Yeah. So, uh, you're, you're talking a lot about uh, sort of dualism and identity and how you uh, connect with your own physical components. And because there's so much, you've given so much thought, particularly to the digestive system, I'm curious how you think about the sort of, what's the term, the, the microbiome or the sort of network of organisms inside us that are maybe also part of who we are but yeah, also but aren't you yeah different species and yeah and all that. that's really fascinating i mean that's what i mean like this book could keep, keep going you know yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's really hard to be like okay like i mean it also is a matter of time you know there's like so many drawings and it's taken me so many sketches to make each one but it would be really fascinating to i mean after the book is out also just like keep going with this project mm. and seeing where that goes because it is really i mean even also your dna there's so much like viral um, what used to get called junk DNA, but now they use a different, a better term for it, but I can't remember what it is. But there's this, you know, a lot of viral information that's been put into um, our DNA that doesn't seem to actually do much, but it's actually a, a very important component of your DNA. And it's not particularly <coughs> involved in creating the human body plan as it is produced by uh, the DNA, you know, in terms of generating proteins and everything, but like it's still there. And so there's like a lot of this like other that is part of who we think of as like a continuous or the we, self. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Either uh, other or we. Uh, yeah. Depending on the way you look at them. Yeah, you're basically a commune, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> like that's kind of what it is. <laughs> like you would die if you weren't inhabited by all of the bacteria that are in your guts. Um, yeah and that are in your skin, for example, and protect you from other ones. Uh, they're all over you. So it's just, 
Like we're essentially so dependent on being almost colonized by all of these other organisms. It's not really colonized, it's like a commune essentially. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, I think in some ways it's, it's like you, you, you know, from, from the birth out, you're just basically this whole agreement of various things. Well, there are still seven drawings coming, so maybe that when she starts yeah. writing uh, the next ones, we'll have things coming out. Yeah. So it's actually the, the whole digestive uh, See? system. When she I, starts, because, because if now. the attention yeah. uh, goes to a certain direction, that's how the drawing will come. Uh, in terms of uh, audition or, you know, who inhabits me and, yeah. and so on. Yeah, there's a lot there. It's, it's really fascinating. It's like really amazing territory um, in a way to think about in terms of like how it could be represented in visual arts and not necessarily just in medicine. And I think in some ways there's like a frustrating relationship of the arts when they're engaged with these subjects, like becoming very scientific or trying to take on like this very objective positivist voice that I find, you know, it's like, where is their territory? It's like you either go into this very surreal territory, right? Where there's just like, it's super subjective and it's just imagination. Or you enter into this territory where art becomes a lab experiment. Um, that is sort of poetic, right? And it's, and it's like, each one, which one is more real? Yeah, or like, can't there be more space? You know, can't there be more space for this engagement with something that is as material as, you know, being a body and at the same time doesn't fall into the, the, the pre-prescribed languages of science to, val to validate itself, you know? Like, and doesn't also just get like, become like, oh, it's whimsical and, and it's surreal. Like, can't there, can there be space in between these things? Because yeah. um, I think there should be more yeah, space. Like, like exams of people who are not viable, but are standing in front of you. Some doctors look at and, and they say, where, where is this person? And the person is there and say, no, it's, this is not supposed to be working, what I see here. And things like this, right? Mm -hmm. That yeah. we don't know where, where's the cut. Yeah, or like when you know when you have experiences that science, like you know, for example, like chronic pain or people who have a lot of conditions that, um, like just medicine, it it's, becomes very frustrating territory because you know it's like you, there's nothing wrong with you, you know, it becomes the thing, and it's like no, but I'm in chronic pain. So there's that that disagreement also is, yeah, it's real. Something that I find really fascinating about your work is that um, you know. As the artwork comes into being, it becomes an impression of your body or is related to yourself or even really a, a, a depiction or, or a, a duplication of yourself. And, um, you know, once that becomes an addition or something that is going out to the world, there's this question of the woman selling her body. Mm. So I'm curious <laughs> about how that uh, dialogue comes into your work as a well. whole. Yeah, that's a really good question, Karina. Um, yeah, I think about that sometimes. Uh, it's, I think it's really, like, as, as a woman who wants to work with notions of being in a body and being embodied, like, my desire is to make things with my body. Like, that's part of it, right? And, like, you're entering into a pre-prescribed scenario, which is, it's then art, and it's then inserted into a marketplace. And there's only so much, like there's so much I can do in terms of like creating work that maybe is not durable and unable to be sold. Um, but I do want things to last. So then like the notion of making things that aren't, that are less material, when I want to talk so much about the material, it, it becomes like kind of like, where, how do I then move away from the, the marketplace? Do I need to in order to actually like effectively be able to use my body without feeling like I'm selling it. Um, I think in some ways the the kind of desire to make things that like put me back in override the concern with like other people seeing it as me selling my body. Like I think like one of the things that I've experienced and noticed in life is that oftentimes, not just as a woman, but I think a lot of people have this experience too, is just like when you're dealing with structures of being less than, right? Like where you're culturally or, or through, through your gender, through your sex, through whatever, considered 
less than, it's often an experience of being kicked out of your own body. Hmm. So it's, you know, it's the notion of like subjecting yourself to things because you don't think you can possibly change your surroundings. And that requires a certain disengagement with your embodiment, mm -hmm. where you're literally just then turning yourself into, into the culture, right? So yeah, I turn up to my job, or like, yeah, I, I just, you know, don't, I deal with a, the, you know, aggression from male collectors, and you're just like riding along with it. You're not actually able to push back because you, you disengage. Like, that's the way to survive, right? Mm -hmm. So in some ways, like, the work for me has, has always done, has always been a lot about like coming back into my body and like owning that space um, and in some ways generating things that I don't want to disappear because I find that some of my favorite artists who were women, like their work disappears and only exists as documentation.